Do you have credibility? The word credo is, it means believe in Latin. So if you see Spanish or Italian or French, they all have a word like that with credo. Credo means Latin. It's, uh, it means belief. Okay? So if you have credibility, it means people believe you. They take your word. So Greece made a contract. We are going to join the euro and we are not going to leave. So if Greece leaves the euro, they break their word. Okay? Did the UK care about breaking their word in the gold standard? No. Did the UK care about breaking their word in the EMS, the forerunner to the euro? No, they didn't, right? The UK don't really care that much about their credibility. Okay? But Greece is quite worried about its credibility. Okay? So, for example, Argentina had a problem with credibility. Nobody would lend money to Argentina. Okay? After 2001, Argentina said, told everybody, don't worry, we're going to keep the fixed rate. You can invest in Argentina. Okay? You invested in Argentina, you believed them. Okay? Then the next day, they changed and you lost all your money. Are you going to give Argentina a loan next year? No, you're not. You're angry. You're annoyed, right? I lost my money. They lied to me. So Argentina lost their credibility. Okay? Can you understand credibility? Yes. Do you think countries need cred credibility? Yes. That's a debate. Some economists will say, well, look at Argentina now. It has no problem to get a loan nowadays. <laughs> Ten years later, right? People forgot about it. It's over. Okay? They'll say, don't worry about credibility. It's just a short-term problem. Okay? Other people, usually the banks and the people who are lending money, exaggerate, right? They say, oh, nobody will ever lend you money again. Right? If you, if you don't break your word, nobody will give you a loan. Okay? They exaggerate on the other side. Okay? But anyway, it's a factor. Credibility is a factor. And then we, here we have credibility against monetary autonomy. So this monetary autonomy, autonomy means I can make my own decisions. I'm autonomous means I make my own decisions. Is the central bank in Ireland autonomous? No, they don't have much to do in the central bank in Ireland these days. Although, surprisingly, the staff went up since Ireland joined the euro. I don't know why. Right? But the European Central Bank decides the interest rate and decides the monetary policy for Ireland. Ireland, okay? For the euro area. Ireland still has a central bank. All it does is regulation and research. Okay? So if we don't have our own currency, we can't decide the interest rate. Somebody else is deciding the interest rate. Are we autonomous? No, we're not autonomous. Autonomous means I decide by myself. Okay? So, can Aruba decide its own interest rate? No. Can Hong Kong decide its own interest rate? No. 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 Why? Right? Can Hong Kong suddenly do a QE program? No. No. Right? So we give up our monetary policy. That's a big deal. Right? Mon but fiscal policy and monetary policy are the two main tools that we can use to stimulate the economy. If we give up monetary policy, it's like having one hand tied behind our back. Okay? All we can use now is fiscal policy. So that's a problem for Greece, stuck in the euro. They have one hand tied behind their back. They can't use monetary policy to get out of the problem. Greece would like to reduce the interest rate, make a very weak currency, do some QE, but Greece can't decide that. Only the ECB can decide. Is the European Central Bank going to make a decision because of Greece? Greece is just 3% of the Eurozone. Are they going to listen to Greece or don't care about Greece? Don't care about Greece. Right, Greece is just 3%. Don't worry, we're not going to change our mind because of Greece, right? Let's listen to Germany and France and Italy, much bigger. Okay? So Greece gave up its autonomy. If Greece wants to get back its autonomy, it needs to leave the fixed exchange rate system. Okay? So, this is the main benefit of fixed... Or, sorry, a benefit of the fixed regime is we have credibility. Okay? In Thailand, Thailand had credibility. Does Hong Kong have credibility? The last 
20 or 30 years it's been the same exchange rate? Yes. 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 Does China have credibility? Yeah. It's changing very slowly. Do you think anybody is going to attack China? China has about $2 trillion in, in foreign reserves. Do you think there's any speculator who has $2 trillion who's going to attack China? No. Probably not, right? So China and Hong Kong, okay, they have the credibility of their stable exchange rate. It's good for trade. Okay? People can invest there. Okay? So if we have a fixed exchange rate, we need to have a restrictive monetary and fiscal policy. So we have to keep down inflation. So the problem is that if we have a recession, we can't reduce the interest rate. We have to keep a high interest rate. Okay? So this can cause unemployment to get worse. Okay? According to Keynes, in the test we said, to respond to unemployment, we should lower the interest rate and increase the money supply. But we can't do that if we're in a fixed exchange rate regime. Okay? So people who have the floating regime, they emphasize the importance of monetary policy in responding to negative shocks. So in Europe, some countries decided not to join the euro. The smart countries, Sweden, Denmark, the UK, right? Countries who decided why? Because they can, this reason, that's why they decided not to join the euro. So Sweden and the UK, when there was the global financial crisis, they depreciated their currency by 20%. They reduced the interest rate to zero. They did QE. And they, they did much better than Ireland, or Belgium, or France, who was trapped in the euro. Okay? Do you understand this? This is a flexibility. Having the flexibility to respond. Okay? So Sweden has a flexibility to respond. The UK has a flexibility to respond to the crisis. Ireland doesn't have flexibility to respond. France, Greece don't have flexibility to respond to the crisis. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is the... Can you understand this point? So if you ask people in the UK, why didn't you join the Euro? This is the answer they're going to give you. Okay? We want to have autonomous monetary policy. Because monetary policy is important, if we have a negative shock, okay? We need to be able to respond to the negative shock. So, <clears throat> unfortunately for small economies, it's not easy to have a floating one because the international capital flows are so big, okay? We can have big swings. They can cause big swings in our, in our exchange rate and our economy. So, <clears throat> we have to take on that uh, negative point, okay? So, do you have any question about these three points? Trade, speculative attack, and credibility against monetary autonomy? Okay, so then you're going to discuss with your partner. Okay, so we're going to discuss about the fixed exchange rate regime versus the floating exchange rate regime. Advantage and disadvantage. Okay, so you can do under the headings of trade, institutional, this one, there's three headings. Okay, so discuss with your partner. Okay, trade, speculative attack, and credibility against monetary autonomy. Okay, or maybe freedom is an easier word than autonomy. Monetary policy <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
What are the advantages? You can tell me the advantages of the fixed exchange rate. There is no currency risk. So it's more stable for trade. Okay, no currency risk. Stable promotes trade. Okay, who can tell me another advantage? Yes. Credibility. Okay, if we keep the fixed exchange rate. Stable for trade, we have credibility in the international economy. Okay? Uh, then, what is disadvantage? Speculation. Okay, there's a higher risk of a speculative attack. Okay, the, the speculators go against the government. Okay? Try to make profit. Yes? Uh, if we can run out of reserves, right? So if we want to do the fixed one, we need to have a lot of reserves. That's what countries have learned by experience, right? So what's the advantage of the floating regime? We can use our monetary policy to respond to the economic shock. That's the most important one, okay? So just to explain a little bit more about this one, this is the exchange rate of the Great British Pound and the, and the Euro. So one pound is equal to one Euro fifty in 2008. Britain reduced their interest rate and did a QE program. So their pound got a lot weaker, 20% weaker, okay? Went from 150 to 130 against the Euro. If you look at the GDP growth in the UK and Ireland, Ireland in the Euro, the UK has the pound, do a lot of trade together. Ireland's GDP growth negative and still negative and getting worse. Okay? 2008, 2009. Britain, rebound. Small amount negative, but rebound quickly. Okay? So Ireland is very close to the UK. So you want to study 
English for the summertime. Where are you going to go? Ireland or the UK? UK currency is 20% cheaper than normal. UK, right? It's cheaper than Ireland. Okay, so Irish language schools are doing less business. Okay, GDP is going down. British language schools doing more business. GDP is going up. Okay, Our, the interest rate, Europe was very slow to react. The European Central Bank, because Germany wasn't that bad, right? So the European Central Bank didn't want to put the interest rate down that low or do the QE. They didn't do the QE until recent, you know, later. So uh, Ireland was stuck with the strong, with higher interest rates and no QE. In the UK, low interest rates. Companies are getting loans, okay? More loans, starting new business, okay? Uh, there's the QE policy, the money supply is increased, okay? People can get higher salary and so on, okay? So, because of this monetary policy reason, the UK was able to do better than Ireland. Who do you think was smarter, Ireland or the UK? <laughs> Do you know why Ireland didn't follow the UK? Similar to Greece. Historical and political reasons. Ireland had a bad relationship with the UK, like Korea and Japan. So Ireland used to be, had to be pegged to the pound, even though it didn't want to be, follow the pound, right? So Ireland had a chance. New friends over there. Oh, we can be friends with Germany now. <laughs> Germany, please be our friend. We want you to like us. Okay? Irish people want people to like them. So they want to be liked by the Germans. So they want... They should have, in my opinion, they should have st stayed with the UK. Right? Ireland does much more trade with the UK than with Germany. Right? But we can understand that countries have different reasons. Political reasons, not just economic reasons. For having a certain exchange rate regime. Okay? Nowadays, it's not so bad for Ireland because of the problems of Portugal and Greece and Spain. Uh, the euro is doing some QE, the interest rate is quite low, the euro is, is undervalued. So countries like Ireland and Germany, the Netherlands are getting some advantage now. Because they're in the same group as Italy and Spain and Portugal and Greece, the currency is, Ireland's currency is, the euro is too weak for Ireland. So Ireland's exports is going up nowadays, and Germany is the same. Okay? Do you understand that idea? In this case, the euro was bad for Ireland. But now, currently, the euro is good for Ireland. Because if we had our own currency, it would be stronger. But because we're in the euro, it's weaker than what it would be if we had our own currency. Because it's being dragged weaker by the other countries. So Germany is quite happy. right? Germany has a good situation now because... Germany should have a strong currency, okay? but because it's in the same group as Greece and Italy and Portugal, it has a weak currency. So it's able to. Uh, investors invested about tens of billions of euros in the German stock market in the last year, right? because they expect the German companies to do better because of the weaker euro. They are in a fixed exchange rate system where they get an advantage. The exchange rate is too weak for them. Okay, so do you understand these advantages and disadvantages? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's go back to the. Uh, you can read the reading in your own in your own time again. Okay, you can go back over the uh, the reading. look at some more graphs now that we can understand uh, a little bit better. Okay, we finished here the last time on the PPT. Uh, we already explained about the carry trade, right? Here is a slide on the carry trade. 
we saw in the exam. So we borrow in the yen from the Japanese bank, convert the funds into the Australian dollar, okay, and hope that the exchange rate doesn't change too much. But we already explained that. Just we should know that the car trade is, is very, it can result in a huge amount of capital flows, like speculation. Okay, so it's an important factor. High interest rate currencies have the demand, low interest rate currencies increase in supply. <clears throat> so, uh, we are just looking at some uh, of the currencies. Here is the British pound, okay? Floating currency, which is quite volatile. Okay, uh, Singapore. Singapore has a managed currency. So Singapore manages here. The dollar is getting Singapore dollar is getting stronger. It's managed. It's on a managed path. Okay. Uh, here we can see more clearly the Chinese RMB. It's on a managed path against the dollar. Right. How many RMB do you get for one dollar nowadays? <laughs> 6.38. When I was in China in 2010, it was 8. Right? So, it's on, a, it's, on a managed, it's on a managed path. Okay? Do we see any volatile lines here? No? Okay? The government is buying and selling to make sure it goes on the path that they want, which was appreciating against the dollar, okay? So we'll do a case study on the RMB also to understand. <coughs> Hong Kong is a pegged currency. So Hong Kong, always 7.8. Sometimes it can change a little bit here, up to 7.7. .7, but, you know, between 7.7 .7 and 7.8. Okay? So... <coughs> so we, we'll just... Uh, we looked at the reading, but this is just recapping the reading. Floating currencies have more risk for firms and investors. Okay? Trading. Very volatile over the short term. Do you understand volatile? Change a lot. Okay? This can complicate doing business for exporters, asset managers, banks, companies. Okay? So basically we need to use a risk management tool with the floating exchange rate. So the managed currency, uh, these currencies are not as volatile, okay? We, we buy or sell the currencies to manage the exchange rate, okay? Why do, why do governments peg their currency? Promote confidence and credibility in their economy, okay, in their currency, and promote economic growth. So, it, we want to encourage FDI, or long-term capital inflows, long-term loans, okay? So we want, if the people know that we are, exchange rate is very stable, they can give us a loan for two years, for four years, for six years. If they think our exchange rate is not stable, they give a loan for three months, for six months. One of the problems in the Korean crisis, Korean banks were getting loans, just very short-term loans from the US, of three months, of six months. But they were lending the money to Korean people to buy houses, 20 years or 30 years, right? So if we have a fixed exchange rate, we can get longer term uh, loans. So it can attract the FDI too. So there is no exchange rate risk in this case, unless the speculators attack. So here is the Saudi Arabian currency. Always the same against the US dollar, okay? Fixed exchange rate. <clears throat> so, as long as we have the peg, it has very low risk to global firms. However, there is the potential for the really big risk. We call it destabilizing speculative attack, okay? If governments abandon, leave the peg for another currency regime, okay? 
then we can have this kind of <coughs> enormous risk. We can have an orderly change. Okay, China changed from the fixed one to the uh, managed one. If we look back at the graph of China, we can see that they, well, it doesn't go far enough, but they used to have, China used to have the fixed, but they changed to the managed one. That was organized, and everybody knew about that, so there was no crisis, right? They, they announced that a year beforehand, okay? When the currencies made the euro regime, they announced that years before. Everything was organized, okay? If Greece was to leave the euro, that would be the correct way to do that. Tell everybody, one year or two years later, three years or four years later, we're going to leave the euro, okay? Then everybody can be prepared. But more often situation is there's attack by the markets, okay? And then you're forced, you don't have a choice. It's not planned, you're forced out. And this can cause some a uh, big impact for companies and investors. Companies and investors can lose a lot of money in that case. So we should be on the alert and we should be looking out for exchange rate regimes which can change. So sorry, here is the Chinese graph, right? Here they had the fixed exchange rate from 2000 to 2004 and then they changed to managed. So here the exchange rate was always 8.25 and since that time, they've allowed it to get stronger, gradually, 5% a year or something like that, right? So, uh, just, we're going to briefly look at these, you can look forward before the next class, we're just going to look at just Britain, Mexico, Filipino uh, stories, right? So you can just read the story, and you can also read online about the British pound. Right? Here you, we have the little story. So you can read about that in your own language if you want. Right? 90, just Google 1992 British Pound. Okay? And you can find the information about uh, exactly what happened in the UK. Okay, so then uh, let's finish there for today.